Hello and welcome to the RadioTimes.com Doctor Who podcast. My name's Hugh. My name's Morgan. And this week we have some honest to goodness Doctor Who news for you. Not that we haven't before, but some big news. Doctor Who is filming again. As of November 2nd, the cameras are rolling. Uh, they're back on set in Cardiff and they're shooting the next season, Coronavirus Be Damned. Uh, although this time, because of the pandemic, there is a bit of a twist, isn't there, Morgan? There is indeed, yes. Obviously, uh, Doctor Who has to abide by certain restrictions in order to be able to film uh, during uh, the pandemic. So we are actually getting fewer episodes than we're used to uh, for this forthcoming series. It will be a series of just eight episodes. Yeah, so uh, normally we'd have, I think you'd say technically we'd have either 10 or 11 episodes. Um, I think they've said it's eight down from 11. So that would be a 10 episode series plus a special, which is obviously what we've got this year. We've had um, 10 episodes earlier in the year and we'd have a special around the festive period, Christmas, New Year, that kind of thing. So yeah, it is a, it is a sizable uh, difference. Um, we've got a little quote here from Chris Chibnall. He said, uh, we're thrilled to be back making the show. Given the complexity of making Doctor Who and with new and rigorous COVID working protocols, it's going to take us a little longer to film each episode, meaning we expect to end up with eight episodes rather than the usual 11. But rest assured, the ambition, humour, fun and scares you expect from Doctor Who will all be firmly in place. For everyone around the world, this is a challenging period, but the Doctor never shirks from a challenge. Um, so yeah, basically that's, that's the big story. There would have been, I mean, there's a question here on what eight episodes means. Uh, isn't it on a very technical note because it's a little unclear whether that means seven episodes plus a festive special or whether it means eight episodes uh, just flat no festive special I'm inclined to think the latter just because um, we were talking about this just before we recorded there wasn't a festive special last year they kind of have done this thing where they had Jodie Whittaker's first series followed by a special which was Resolution in First series 2018, resolution on New Year's Day 2019. New Year's Day 2020, they had Spyfall, which was the first episode of the next series. Functioned as kind of a big New Year's Day special because it was a huge episode. It was extra extended, but it was just also episode one. And now, mm. moving forward, around the same time, we don't know exactly when yet, but over the festive period, um, we've got this special Revolution of the Daleks. So I reckon there's a 10-month shooting period, right, for the series. I reckon that probably they're going to be shooting eight episodes maybe to kick off at the end of uh, I what year it would be, 2021 uh, or at the right at the beginning of 2022. So there'll be maybe a year between it. But yeah, so basically my headline for that is I think the eight episodes they're making are eight regular episodes, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes total sense. Like you say, it's not now a given that we get a, a special around the festive period after um, series 12 sort of yeah it, it did a kind of almost like a de facto special with, with Spyfall on New Year's Day but then that was also as you say episode one of the series um and so I, I yeah I agree I think it's it's most likely that we'll get an eight a full eight episode series launching um around that 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 festive period because I think seven a seven part series and a special something about seven that doesn't quite sit right with me I don't I don't I don't know what it is maybe I just um fond of even numbers but it, I think an eight part series uh, seems, seems like the way to go. It seems plausible, doesn't it? Like eight parts, you know, that kind of work. That's, that's like a kind of pretty standard drama length. I mean, they are doing, they did do a seven part His Dark Materials this year, but that was because they lost an episode. You know, it's mm. like, it would be unusual. I mean, Doctor Who started 13 episodes, which is also an unusual number. But you know, see, you never know with Doctor Who what you're getting, but um, I think that's the most plausible. I mean, there's always something on around Christmas or New Year for Doctor Who, it, whether it's a normal episode or whether it's a special. Um, but yeah, we kind of, we should talk a bit about the losing the episodes generally. It's quite an interesting move. And we did talk about this a few weeks ago. Regular listeners may remember we did a, a special on what the pandemic might mean for Doctor Who. And one of the things we did talk about was whether they'd cut the episodes. To be honest, I think, I haven't listened back to it, but I think we were talking about maybe them only doing like five or six episodes. So mm. I'd say this is a win. <laughs> well, you know, like, as Chris Chibnall said, like, I think it's great that we're getting Doctor Who at all. Right, mm. because making making a show that's as um, large scale and, and complex as Doctor Who at any time is difficult. To make it right now, I imagine must be nigh on impossible. And and it's worth saying as well, it's not that they're spending less time shooting. Um, no, they're still they're, they're still doing the ten month shoot. Yeah, they're doing the exact spending the exact same amount of time making the show. It's just that now it's much harder to make the show with 
COVID restrictions, it takes longer. So you can make less Doctor Who in the same amount of time. Um, and, you know, I think there was a, a, a bit of a um, negative reaction in some quarters, people saying, oh, only eight episodes, only eight episodes. Um, it, it, and it's important to remember, you know, we're not owed 13 or 12 or, or even 10 episodes. Like, I remember the first time um, it, it, the episode count went down from 13 to 12. And even then fans were like, oh, that's a sign. The BBC doesn't care about Doctor Who as much as it used to. But eight episodes is still a, a substantial order for a drama, especially one um, that presumably, you know, costs a little more than your average, like, like Doctor Who. You know, most dramas these days run to six episodes. Some run only to four or three. And that's under you know, regular circumstances. I mean, other, other than Doctor Who, what is the last drama you can think of that ran to 10 episodes or even, or, you know, 12 or 13. It was, it was quite commonplace when Doctor Who first returned in 2005, when you had the likes of uh, Merlin and, and Robin Hood, these series that very much um, followed in Doctor Who's wake, they all had sort of 13 episode runs, but a, a 13 episode drama is pretty much unheard of now, right? Like eight episodes is, I would say slightly above average. And that's what Doctor Who's doing under these incredible restrictions. So I, I actually think we're, we're very lucky to be getting what we're getting. Definitely. I mean, I'm kind of interested whether, because obviously, you know, the, the situation with the pandemic keeps changing and, you know, we kind of keep moving into different restrictions and stuff. You do wonder, like, you know, hopefully <laughs> they can make the eight, you know, because part yeah. of me is like, what if all of a sudden they get into a, well, his dark materials, as I mentioned earlier, lost an episode with James McAvoy and because of restrictions, you know, now I'm like, what if they're, you know, they're planning a great episode about, I don't know, some historical figure and then all of a sudden, that person has to self-isolate and they're like, oh, well, I guess we can't do that one. You know, like it's, it's, it's all still fairly precarious. So I, I hope, I hope that they've kind of allowed extra space. <laughs> I'm sure they have. Yeah. I mean, they've been, I'm well, sure they've been thinking of nothing else for six months for how to do this, but you know, yeah. I hope they've, they've got some but, space for if things go wrong. And they didn't sound all that confident themselves though. They were like, like, I think they are giving themselves some leeway in the sense they were like, we'll probably like, they know how much time they have to shoot. Right. And they're sort of saying, given everything, we'll probably get eight episodes within that time. But as you say, they're, 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 they may have to, you know, hopefully not, but there may be an instance where they have to pause filming um, at you know, certain points, uh, or it may just take longer to get things done than they're expecting, even though I'm sure you know, lots of thought has gone into that. So it may well be that they only, like, actors are only contracted up to a certain point, crew is only contracted up to a certain point, they can only have the studio for a certain amount of time, and they might not even get eight done so it's like it's like eight at best right definitely yeah and you know I, I i think there's other interesting things to think about as well like on the flip side i'm sure that the day-to-day -day shooting will take longer because you just need to clean everything a lot more you know you need to keep mm. stuff distance you need to just be on top of everything make sure everything's safe all the time like that'll just add you know i filming always takes longer than expected anyway and I, you feel like these little delays will just add up and add a day here a day there you know but i mean one thing i did think about you know, any time they would have spent flying abroad, not going to happen <laughs> mm. <laughs> to get that time back. You know, uh, we were going to go to South Africa and shoot an alien planet. Sod that. Let's go to the quarry in Triorki. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do it old school. Um, and, you know, things like that. They, they, maybe that's silver lining. It's not silver lining in terms of, you know, we want the show to be glossy and stuff. But they'll, whatever, maybe they'll claw back a couple of days here and there because they won't be able to mm. go to Comic-Con. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no. I think it's interesting. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they make it. I mean, I am quite like pleased that they're making as much as they are, like you say, and also that it's it's happening again. It's filming. I mean, it's as of November second, according to the clapboard picture that they posted. Uh, so I guess they're about two weeks in, so very early days. But yeah, it's nice to know Doctor Who is kind of a going concern because you know it's it's a funny one because Doctor Who was not set to film until around now anyway. Um, in their plans, they were having a lot of time off, some writing time, I think, for Chris Chibnall and the other writers. Um, and you know, presumably, then that writing time became even more important because, in the midst of it, while they were still doing post production on the first series, this pandemic started happening. I mean, I do wonder how far they got and whether there's a couple of like secret lost Doctor Who episodes that we won't get to see now, you know, like anything that was like, oh, yeah, we're gonna do this big episode where we go and meet, you know, this really cool alien on this. We've, we've looked at uh, Valencia, you know, the city of arts and sciences is going to make a brilliant alien home world. Now it's like, what's that? Now we're going to do one where the doctor, uh, the, the spiders are back. Uh, Arachnids of the UK too. <laughs> we're back in Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, it's interesting with Doctor Who in that it doesn't 
function entirely like um, any other drama. So if, if there was a drama where you had a very clear um, story arc across, say, six episodes, and then you couldn't complete filming, you'd be in real trouble. Whereas with Doctor Who, you know, with enough planning, if they, generally the way the story arc tends to play out is you have a very sort of arc heavy opener, um, a very arc heavy finale, which pays off everything that, that was set off, uh, set up in the opener. And then you kind of touch on it here and there um, throughout the series. Now that's not, that's very, you know, broad. That's not always the case. For example, like last series you had episode five, which was a huge arc episode, but generally that's kind of the way things break down. So if you get episode one filmed and you get the finale filmed, you probably could, um, or, or at least plotted, if you had the first episode plotted and the, and the finale plotted, and then you found out that you were going down from 10 to eight, you could probably, at, this, at the sort of plotting, scripting stage, lose a couple of the more standalone episodes in between, and it wouldn't affect the overall arc. Like, if you look at something like um, series Axios. 12... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to pick on Praxius because I actually quite like Praxius. But yeah, if you, if you if this had happened last year and you had to lose a couple of episodes from series twelve, you could probably do it fairly easily and like make a few tweaks here and there, and it wouldn't affect you know, the timeless child arc or all, all, all that badly. So I'm hopefully this has come soon enough in the planning stages. Like I'm sure it was a massive pain for them to have to kind of rethink everything, but hopefully it's come. Yeah, like you say, they were always going to have a huge break um, anyway. So hopefully it's come soon enough that they were able to kind of accommodate that and it will actually, even though it's going to be still incredibly hard to make the show, to film the show, they'll have had enough time to think about the, the storytelling aspect of it. Definitely. I also hope that, you know, they, I, again, this is one of those things where I'm not saying that they wouldn't be able to do this. You really hope that they're going to be able to, you know, make it feel like as fun and, you know, possible as Doctor Who always does. You know, it's not going to seem mm. like this week the Doctor and Yaz just hang out in the TARDIS two metres apart. Do you know what I mean? Like, you hope... Because my big fear... The with of Destruction 2. Yeah. yeah my, my, my big worry with a lot of the stuff being made during the pandemic, especially early on when we were still kind of feeling our way around restrictions and stuff, was, is this just going to be a worse version of what we normally get? And I think we said in our thing, you know, it would be better for Doctor Who to wait and so on. But I think now we can look at it and say, how long would you be waiting? Like there's a point yeah. at which you kind of have to just get on with stuff. Um, yeah. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that like within the restrictions, this isn't going to be a serious Doctor Who where we look back and feel like, oh yeah, that was the COVID year. Do you know what I mean? Like you kind of you want to be yeah. like, oh, episode three was amazing. Not like, oh yeah, this was the year when they never, they, they, they had all, the, for some reason, the TARDIS was always outside with vents going through and, you know, the Cybermen yeah. all wore full PPE as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, I'm sure it wouldn't no. be, but... I, I think, again, like one of the few upsides of the fact that this pandemic has gone on for so long, um, and there aren't many, but is, is the fact that um, they will have had plenty of time to, to think about this. So the, the shows that potentially could suffer, and I'm not saying they will, but the ones that, where you would, might expect the impact to be more visible is something like, for example, Line of Duty, which was halfway through filming when mm -hmm. all this happened, had to stop and then rethink everything and then go back to filming. And it's like when all of us ne watch the next series of line of duty we're all there's always we're going to be waiting for that sort of the covid moment where we go ah oh, okay that's where that's where it happened because now all of a sudden no one's touching each other and they're all you know this, this amount of uh, distance apart at all times and so on so whereas like doctor who you think they will have had enough time um to think about it to be clever about it so that it won't it won't appear as obvious as the shows which had to kind of get back into production more quickly Definitely. And you feel like that this will be a series that was designed to be done in this way. It's not going to be exactly like, what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be something where they kind of retrofit it. Like it's good. They've got to, the Doctor Who's always a lot of moving parts. It's like, you know, a new mini movie every week, different cast every week, different sets every week. They're used to handling a lot of sort of production difficulty. So I imagine that with this one, it'll just be, it'll just be one more factor for them to have factored in. <laughs> as you often do with factors, factors the name. Um, and yeah, my, my other thing is I kind of, I mean, maybe I'm being too optimistic here, but I do think like if we are seeing this in, you know, 2021 at the end or early 2022, maybe we'll be at a point where things will be more back to normal. So I hope that they won't have been unlucky enough to have been filming all the way through the pandemic. And then just as people are kind of able to like go outside and touch each other again, we cut to the Doctor and Yaz talking through a, a sheet of plexiglass you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean again that's that's something that i think will be less the other question around um covid in drama is not just how does it impact the production but also to what extent do you address it on screen mm -hmm. and 
you know, with again with something like Line of Duty, there's a there's a question there. Do you, do AC12 suddenly wear face masks and then? But with this, like it, it, it's Doctor Who, it's pure escapism, right? I I, I think it would be. I'd be very, very surprised. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I'd be very surprised if they return to Sheffield in 2020 and they start talking about COVID. And I, I imagine Doctor Who is is going to be um, intended as it always is a sort of grand escapism. And you can go to alien planets and not worry about our our earthly concerns. So again, it's kind of perfectly um, positioned to to work around the the limitations and um, the impact of, of COVID. Definitely. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, definitely the, the Christmas special coming up was, was filmed before lockdown. So you'd hope that they haven't like, I mean, maybe they have, but I don't think they would have like retrospectively referenced it in any way. And if you're not referencing in, in that one, which apparently is set in the present day, you know, in the UK, it's like, why would you bother? I mean, maybe in a few years time, they'll, you know, like how I think I'm trying to think of examples, but you know, for example, really randomly, uh, Cold War, that's set during Doctor Who existing, right? Mm. Like, and so even if they wouldn't necessarily have, you know, covered that at the time, in 40 years, they may be able to cover this as a story where the, you know, 18th Doctor or whatever, maybe maybe more, um, zips back in time to the great pandemic. I mean, God knows what you do. You do like a monster who lives inside masks or something, but... Well, that's the, yeah, well, that's the thing is they're like, it, it, this is, this is in, in, for, for, for most people, this is quite a dull crisis. <laughs> in the, se in yeah. the sense of yeah a lot, many of i mean uh, you know many of us are in lockdown um so I, I don't know if it automatically lends itself to exciting drama hence why i think it would be in, in doctor who's best interests to just skirt the whole thing and, and, and act of pure escapism i think you're right i think that if doctor whoever does cover it it should be when we kind of know what the end is do you know what i mean like where we kind yeah. of we see the whole shape of it when they've done all the you know glossy dramas starring Matthew McFadden and Rafe Spall or whatever, um, and that's all done. And then, and Doctor, and another decade or so after that, maybe Doctor yeah. Who could knit back. Um, I have another question, which I did see some people uh, speculating about online. Um, it's it's a bit spicy. Do you think it's possible that Doctor Who would do this shorter episode count and then subtly keep the shorter episode count, or do you think they go back to normal? Uh, see, that's that's interesting. I mean, again, what what's important here is the fact that they're they're filming eight in the same amount of time yeah right so they haven't actually reduced the filming time so if you were to do eight episodes um ordinarily that would imply a, a shorter running time that would imply you know a, a reduction in budget a reduction in production time so i mean it's possible but it's it's not as if at the moment they're cutting corners and yeah, so yeah. they can go and so they can go hey we made the show on the cheap this year let's save money again next time round because there's still spending the same amount of money, the same amount of time making the show. So, like, it, it's, it, again, we, we've gone from uh, 13 to 12 to 10 to now 8. It's entirely possible Doctor Who could change its format again, but I don't think this is a dry run for that because, because there's no way of sort of measuring, um, measuring if, it, if, it, if it benefits the show in any way. But, you know, do you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're investing the exact same amount of time and money they just can't make any more episodes so i don't feel like this would impact the decision to um to, to change the episode count going forward um it, that, that there may be factors that do make them decide to do that but i don't feel like this would be one of them if that makes sense no i totally get what you mean i i i agree i think that i can get why people are a bit concerned about it you know because mm. No one wants there to be less Doctor Who if, you know, if you can have more. Why, why, why have less if you can have more? But in this situation, it's like they're using the full time they have. They're just being realistic about how much they're going to be able to do in that time. Mm. And, you know, Doctor Who's done these sort of uh, pragmatic things before. Like there was a year Stephen Moffat was too busy with Sherlock. So they essentially gave Doctor Who a year off and made class instead. And then Doctor Who did come back. Spoiler alert. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the end. They, just because they didn't do no. a series one year didn't mean it was gone forever. And again, like not not to keep banging this drum, but eight episodes would be great anyway. <laughs> yeah, eight, eight episodes in a pandemic is kind of extraordinary. Eight episodes in a normal year would also be fine. So if this if this is um a, you know a sign of things to come, I don't necessarily think it is. I think if it ever did change its format again, like I say, it would be for sort of different reasons. But Doctor Who has changed its its format before. It may well do so again. And if if that means we get eight episodes going forward. That's again. That's still like a, a 
really solid, you know, strong run for a for a drama. We it could well be that um, in the future Doctor Who be, do, doesn't return for a series at all, and that it becomes something that like the BBC bring back um, for specials. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a you can have an Easter special and a Christmas special and that kind of thing. And it does, you know, it's it's one of those shows that um, can absolutely stand up to having its 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 format tweaked. And also it, because it's a kind of staple of the BBC, um, <laughs> it's an odd comparison, but like it's become on the level of you know it's it's on the level of something like Only Fools and Horses or mm -hmm. you know something like that, where you could you could easily imagine that it goes off air as a series, but it keeps coming back every few years for a special. Um, so actually, like, if we're getting eight episodes a year, pretty much every year or every other year, I'm I'm happy with that because the the alternative the alternative could be much worse. Sounds very <laughs> sounds very dramatic, but it's true. Very Doctor Who like. The alternative doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> yeah, I think as well. You know, like sometimes less is more, and sometimes it's nice to give things a little rest and kind of have things come back a little later, have more gaps. Mm. I mean, I do oh, feel oh. sorry. No, was, Torchwood is a perfect example where mm. um, you had uh, it's 13 episodes, I think, initially. And then, but then the one that everyone celebrates and talks about is, uh, is Children of Earth, which was five episodes, I think, stri uh, stripped across the week. So that really was a case of, of less is more. And it's not, um, you know, it's not necessarily the case that fewer episodes means um, greater quality, but that is an example of where that did work. So like you could, again, Doctor Who could do that. You could have a kind of, you know, five episode, a five part or stripped across a week. Um, and that's, that's something else the show could, could explore. So yeah, you're absolutely right in that um, a, a reduction in quantity doesn't necessarily mean a reduction in quality. I was going to say as well, this is possibly the one year that every year fans are complaining about how long a gap there is between series. And this might be the one year where they give Doctor Who a break <laughs> because every TV show is going to have a much longer gap than usual between <laughs> series because everyone had to take several months off. So Doctor Who won't be the only one with, um, well, I'm not sure if it, I don't think it's, it will ever be more than a year between episodes because of this festive special. They're very canny like that. But mm. um, yeah, I th it, they just keep us going. They just give us a taste and keep pulling us back in. Um, but yeah, I think they'll, people will hopefully be willing to, you know, give Doctor Who a break. And the thing is as well, you know, I, I, I'm excited that, like you said, Doctor Who's being made at all. Um, mm. And the fact that they're making eight episodes, that's exciting. And I, I kind of love that they're being pragmatic. That feels very Doctor Who, you know. It's the his that show has a history of, like, production challenges, you know, like the original studio that kept overheating, so they had to stop, you know, the cameras were so old. You know, yeah. that have their leading man have leaving and then having to recast. You know, like all these things that kind of helped make the show. I feel like Doctor Who thrives under adversity, so... This, maybe this is only a good thing, you know, that Doctor Who, well, not a good thing broadly for the world, but maybe this isn't such a bad thing for Doctor Who, you know, like maybe this will make the episodes kind of different to what they would have been, but maybe, you know, a bit more vital, a bit more inventive because they have to be. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think Doctor, that's a really good point. Doctor Who has always um, made a virtue out of obstacles and sort of, yeah, found opportunity and adversity. So yeah, you're, you're leading man is uh you know is, is ailing and has to leave the show all of a sudden and you from that you get regeneration which has allowed the show to continue on for as long as it has or, or you know, um we, you know we need budget cuts potentially okay we'll do the doctor uh, exiled to earth which could have you know sort of fundamentally undoing a huge key part of what people at the time thought was the format of the show but actually that's one that's a one of the now one of the most all-time sort of most beloved um, series of, of the classic series, season seven, John Pertwee's first series. So yeah, it's Doctor Who's always, um, yeah, sort of triumphed over adversity and, and as you say, made, um, but, you know, come out on top against these obstacles. So it could, could well be that it does it again. You've just now made me think, what if this is secretly going to be, you know, John Pertwee Mark II, where Jodie Whittaker's Doctor is stuck on Earth uh, and has to help Unit. I mean, I wouldn't hate it. I mean, the, the people that are mad about Unit um, apparently disappearing in a puff of smoke, they'd love it if they brought back Unit. And no, I, I, I think there's the, definitely the potential for that. Um, could be interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, pos the possibilities are endless. They are, they are. Um, but you know what's not endless? This podcast, though sometimes <laughs> it might feel that way. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, li to those listening, um, what do you think about the news of the reduced episodes? Um, are you excited to have Doctor Who back? Are you apprehensive? 
um, or you know, are you just you know not really feeling anything about it and more excited about the festive special? Please let us know um, and let us know anything else. Let us know anything else you'd like us to talk about. Actually, you know, we don't normally ask that, but you know, if there's any episodes you fancy us revisiting, or you know, anything you know you'd fancy us discussing about the show, let us know. That'd be that'd be fun. Uh, next week we'll be here with some uh, Doctor Who Day. Uh, celebrations. We won't be here on Doctor Who Day, but I'm sure we'll be covering that in some form uh, in the week afterwards. That's on the 23rd of November, um, which was in the past, if you're listening to this on uh, on some sort of catch-up. Uh, and you can find previous and future episodes of this podcast on the radiotimes.com YouTube channel or on things like Acast, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, whatever they're all called. They're all funny names, those things. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. Um, but yeah, until... The next time you hear us speaking, uh, I've been Hugh Fullerton. And I've been walking Jeffrey. And this has been us signing off into the time vortex. I've got to work on my sign-offs. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>